Deportivo La Coruña are one of the biggest clubs in Spain. Well, at least they were, because in the late 90s, early 2000s, they had a spell of winning trophies. They won the Spanish League in 2000, won the Copa del Rey in 2001, and got all the way to the semi-finals in the Champions League in the 2003-2004 season. And if you don't know, they now find themselves down in the third tier of Spain, and they have been there for three years as well. It does look like they're finally about to get promoted, but there is no better team in Spain than to use the money will approach with and get them back to the top of Spanish football. This is going to take a very long time, so grab yourself some popcorn and enjoy as we rebuild Deportivo to Champions League winners using Moneyball. Now, we are, of course, starting this in the 23-24 season where Deportivo find themselves in the third tier of Spanish football, which is utter heartbreak because they are such a big club but find themselves in an absolute mess. They are massive title favourites to win it, and luckily in this year, it looks like they are going to. We have also got some very big names at the club as well like Lucas Perez, Pablo Martins, Jimmy Navarro, Michael Balenciaga. These are players which are all La Liga, or used to be La Liga standard players, but they are also very old. The squad is full of over 30s and they are all our best players. So for the first couple of years, Moneyball is going to be difficult. I mean, Salva Sevilla here is a three and a half star player. He's 39 years of age and he's here at Carina to hopefully get them back to the second tier of Spanish football. And hopefully we can do that in season number one. There is a couple of very good youngsters here. David Mailer is the player we're locking in in the left wing position for the first couple of seasons. He's consistent, which I like a lot. He's quick, good crossing, good dribbling and has potential to be a decent second division player. I think we can get him higher than that and I'm hoping we could use him in the La Liga as well as Angel Puerto, who is a decent looking centre back. Some uh, poor strength, but very good in actual defensive areas, heading, marking and tackling. Decent enough in terms of his pace as well. Again, hopefully someone we can use in the uh, top division of Spain, but it's going to take quite a long time to get there. We've got two seasons minimum before we even get to the top sphere of Spain. So make sure you like the video because this is going to be an absolute task, but let's get into it. Season one with Deportivo. And all, to be honest, I'm not going to waste too much time on the first couple of seasons because we have absolutely smoked the third tier of Spain. 27 wins, 10 draws, nearly going invincible with just the one loss, a 57 goal difference. And there's a man at the top of this goal scoring chart named Lucas Perez, who we all know. He's been at places like Arsenal, West Ham. He's played Premier League football. He's just backed 41 goals in 41 games and 13 assists and dropped a 7.44 average rating. He's quite good. He is 35, but I think next year as well, he could be absolutely massive in helping us get up to the uh, top tier of Spain. He is fantastic, and he's just had an unbelievable season, and hopefully he can carry that on for us as well. There was some other fantastic players. Uh, Davo in on loan, a 29-year-old winger, scored 12 goals, got 10 assists, and dropped a 742 which is mental. Uh, Kevin is a youngster that played quite well when he played. Salva Sevilla, the 40-year-old, he played well when he played, but because he's 40, he is now retiring. Uh, Jose Angel, 31 years of age, done very well. Peke, it looks like a decent little player. Five goals and two assists. He was quite good. Uh, Pablo Varache, another best player, 19 goals, 31 years of age. Paris Adot, fantastic. Nine assists from right back, 34 years of age. We have cooked this season. But it is like a retirement home here at Deportivo. And we need to try and change things in that regard. David Mayler scored eight goals and got four assists in his 39 games. And Angel Puerto, just one goal, two assists and a 6.68. Maybe not quite progressing at the same level as David, but certainly a decent enough season. Now, a few things to mention here at Deportivo. Finances wise, we're actually okay. We're in the positive by 3 million. There is a little bit of debt on the club of 17 million. But if you've managed in Spain, you know that's pretty much the case for every single club. Also interesting in Spain, is that the money board approach works best here because there's actually a salary cap in the top division based on how good you're doing. So you sort of have to money ball anyway, but obviously we'll be using the money ball spreadsheets, etc., to make it as good as possible. There is a link up there to how to set up money ball, how to find money ball players as well. I'm not going to be showing you the spreadsheet in this video. If you want to find that, there is a link up there which you can watch and learn how to do it. We have got the view all installed. We are ready to go and for sign some players. We have 1.23 million pounds in the bank, 50k in wage budget. 
So let's get in to our first season in the second tier of Spanish football. So three players have left on the free transfer and retiring. One being Salva Sevilla, who looks to be a fantastic player, but he is old and he is now an assistant manager. So he won't be staying around. And in terms of the rest of the outgoings, Mario Solano has left to West Ham on a free. Amin has gone to Hughes Agita on a free contract as well. Angel Puerto to FC Norges Land. And Fernando Solimos has left on a free. Nobody raised whatsoever, but we do have some very good signings. Signing one, Yassin Fortune on a free contract signed from Policia is a very good 25-year-old Algerian striker. Tio Zidane has come in. He has been released from Real Madrid. He is from the Zidane family. So, of course, we bring him in here to Deportivo. Cieli Belezia was released from Zaglie in Poland and he had a fantastic season above a 7.2. He is consistent and looks brilliant and just 25 years of age as well. jean Mikel Mangondutia is a extremely consistent goalkeeper who was released from Amorbieta in the second tier of Spain and when he played, he was very good as well. So he's a decent second tier player. He's going to be our number one. And finally, Javier Sorasa, who has been released from the Girona squad. He was playing as Girona B last year, got three goals in 19 games and a 7.1 average rating. He is consistent. He's got great flair, dribbling and first touch. And for that cam role, he looks absolutely brilliant. So he comes in to be a backup there. And obviously with these signings as well, for the first couple of seasons, it's very difficult to, to give you a proper rundown of how good these guys have been. It was very difficult. There was, I think, 80 players on the uh, on the Moneyball screen to try and find some players to get in. So pretty much all of them were free to try and sign ins for this one. Uh, and that would be the case, to be fair, for the first couple of seasons as we look to get ourselves into the Spanish league. But it is what it is. The team is looking like so. Mangon Gautier in goal. Paris Adol, Jem Sanchez, Martinez, Simao as the back four. Villares, Jose Angel, Marache, Tio Hernandez, um, David Mayla, and Lucas Perez as the striker. Backups wise, there's a few decent signings in here a few decent players but again sorting this by the age profile of the squads it's not looking good our first team is full of players over 30 as is our backups and uh, the first team is completely over the age of 23 so there is a big problem of age here the good thing is at Deportivo they have a fairly decent youth academy we've got a three-star youth facilities three-star training facilities and a one and a half star youth recruitment obviously throughout the rebuild we're looking to make that better and better and better the youth recruitment at uh, the youth facilities and training facilities are already very good for this level so I'm not too fussed on that it's just trying to find youth recruitment that can get up to five star as quick as possible because we are developing some very good players we check out the under 19s it's full of some five star wonder kids that are going to be uh, Liga league standard and in the corona b side as well there are some very good players in here now you know of what i do on every single rebuild as i bring them all up into the first team i have them training with the first team but available to play in the b squad or the under 19s based on their ability and that should make them develop as good as possible and if they're not quite at that level we'll send them out alone and they ain't going to get some game time over there because that is the most important thing this season of course the spanish second division and uh, we will be in the uh, spanish cup as well but we haven't got to worry about that for a good few years season preview wise they're predicting us in 12th place which i will certainly take because here in the second tier of spain top six is where you need to get to to get into the playoffs so that is the goal for season two and well ladies and gentlemen on the last day of the season we have scraped ourselves in on 68 points into sixth place and ready to take on the playoffs. We have Elche, Tenerife, and Oviedo standing in our way. We are against Oviedo up first. I decided to save it here so I can show you guys how the season has gone. And then we'll go into the playoffs. But a very good season. Predicted down in 12th. Going into the top six and playoffs. And La Liga is a chance. Now, we are the worst team in here. But it only is separated by eight points. So there is certainly a chance. Albacete and Granada getting back promoted. I am very happy with how the season is, and especially because something happened in January. Lucas Perez decided to retire. I've got no idea why, because he was actually doing okay. Three goals in seven games in the second tier of Spain, but he just sacked it off. It was the 22nd of December. He was going on his Christmas break with his family and he decided he was done for the season. So he had no superstar striker. And because of how I do these simulations, I didn't know about that until we finished the season. Yassine Fortuna, who was signed to be a backup, stepped in and to be fair to him, got 14 goals and four assists. Javier Sarasa, the young can we signed from the Girona B side, 12 goals and two assists as well. David Mailer, very good this season. Again, eight goals and six assists. Really does look like the best academy prospect here at Deportivo. If you're doing a 
Deportivo save. Look at him for sure. Pablo Varacacci, 8 and 7. Uh, Silvio Bolezia, 5 and 3. 16 games, 22 off the bench. I think he's actually very good. Um, he's just suffering because I'm locking in David Mailer. I think from next season onwards, we'll see a lot better out of Bonetza, as I won't be locking in Mailer for, well, it depends, next season, if we're in the top division, that is, of course. Um, Jose Angel, 36 games, 5 goals and 4 assists from DM. And Paris Adot, at 35 years of age, is still absolutely cooking. I think we need to get into these playoffs and see if we can secure La Liga football next year. So the first leg of the semi-finals of the playoffs got us to a fantastic start with Vlad Karachi getting us 1-0 up in 35 minutes and we were looking absolutely brilliant. I will show you the stats after this game. We absolutely cooked the third best team in the league. A screamer there from Fortuna from 25 yards finds the top corner and we're going to get a third in the 66th minute. David Mailer, the Deportivo man, finds Fortuna and he makes it 3-0. A simply brilliant start to our semi, well, to our playoff start against Oviedo and as mentioned, the stats were brilliant. 20 shots to their two, 14 on target to their one, and 57% possession. And the second leg away from home, we dominated just as much and were 1 0 winners with a Paris adult, the 35 year old fullback, getting us the lead. And we have the final up next against Tenerife. And what I find quite weird is that the final of the playoffs is also a two legged affair. Completely different to how it's done in England, but we got ourselves 1 0 up in 16th minute after an own goal from Loic. We then go 2 0 up, 36 minutes in, adult down the right hand side. He he might be old, but he can whip a ball in. And Fortune, fair play to him. He stepped up this season and he was brilliant. Sarasa found Valcarace, who back heels it to Sarasa, falls back to the man, and he makes it 3 0. And genuinely, there was no point in this being a two legged affair. We were on fantastic form and uh, we were just scoring goals for fun. Adot finds Valcarace in the box again to make it 4 0 in 56 minutes. Honey Montel then gets a corner ball whipped in and he makes it 4 1 for uh, Tenerife. But we were going to get a fifth because we were simply ridiculous in this game. Santa Marina finds Vucune in behind. He makes it 5-1 in the first leg. And the second leg was just a case of wrapping things up. A one on draw and we missed a penalty. Absolutely dominant 6-2 on aggregate, which means Deportivo La Coruña, ladies and gentlemen, are going to be in the La Liga next year. Sixth place, 68 points. We scraped into the playoffs, but we absolutely dominated the playoffs. Six to an aggregate against Tenerife. Five, well, what was it? Five, five nil against Oviedo in the end. Absolutely storming past them. Elche falling short to Tenerife, three nil on aggregate. And we are in to the Liga, which is brilliant. Finances wise, things are looking okay. Still a little bit positive in the overall balance. De de debts wise, we've not chased it down too much. But now that La Liga money, which is okay, I suppose, compared to the other two tiers, absolutely brilliant. And now the money ball can really start. As you can see, we now have 136 players, which we can go and scout and potentially get in to the first team for next year, which is around double what we had last year, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, in terms of the squad, there is a few players, again, that are retiring due to their age. Balenciaga and Pablo Martins, who was Martins was the starting centre-back last year. He's gone. Paris Adol is 35. I imagine he's going to be in the out. Uh, German Perenio will be gone. Jose Angel is 33. Zemo Navarro, 35. All these players are very good, but are probably on their last legs and will be either retiring or leaving. So a big rebuild is needed for this Deportivo side. And what I'll be doing on Patreon is dropping a few save files over there. Of course, the final save file, whenever that may be, the end of season two playoff save file as well. So you guys can rebuild this Deportivo side from La Liga as well. And of course, the same, uh, start of season three, so you guys can rebuild from the point where I have got Deportivo uh, in terms of the signings and everything you can pick up from what I have done. A massive thank you to any of the legends that do support over on Patreon. Your names are running down the screen right now and you are literally helping make the channel better than you can ever imagine. You are helping me in so many different ways and I cannot say thank you enough. For just £5 a month, you can support the channel. For £2 a month, you can support the channel and you don't get any rebuild files, but for £5, you get the rebuild files as well and that could be your next FM24 save. A massive thank you, but let's get in and I can show you the signings I made for our first season in the La Liga. Well, again, there was a few players retiring. Mikel Balenciago, Pablo Martins, Jerem Pareño and Alvaro Baladia all retired. And we also sold uh, Theo to Como, Berto Carengani as a Pogon, and Zemo Navarro to the Go Ahead Eagles and raised £575,000. Now, in Moneyball, I like to keep things transparent. I like to try and sell more than I bring in. 
That simply isn't possible. With everyone retiring, I need to bring some players in that can come in to this first side. So I have spent £5 million, but we've done it very wisely. Signing one for 2.6 million is an Irishman Andy Lyons from Blackpool and this guy looks absolutely brilliant. As an attacking wing back, I am absolutely buzzing to bring Andy Lyons to Spain. Max Norman Williamson, someone I like to sign in these rebuilds a lot, is also coming in from Christiansund, a fantastic young Norwegian centre back with brilliant potential. And Adrian Lovenu signed for just £300,000 from Lodz in Poland. Again, looks very good as a decent backup rotational centre back. Now as I always do, I've made a mistake and I forgot to tell you about the players out over here. Yanis Lettard has left to Austria for 240k, Peke to Brescia for 400k and Brace Val to Racing Santander for 725,000 which does give us a bit more money and allows us to spend another 4 million pounds. And most of that was on Gabriel Silva, a signing from Gabal, a young Brazilian central deck midfielder who is consistent and had a banging season over there and he looks absolutely brilliant. He dropped a 7.03 with 3 goals and 3 assists and as a young man coming into Spain, I think he's going to be our superstar camp for years to come. £750,000 was spent on Steve Capaldi, a, a Congolese centre-back from Legia. Again, 6.99, just below the 7 rating, which is annoying because it must have dropped after the games have been finished. And a 6.97 in the season before, £750,000. He's consistent and 27 years of age that brings that experience at the back that we have lost from a lot of players retiring. And our final signing for actual money is Renato. Ronaldo, not that one, Ronaldo Damas, the Haitian striker that we have signed from GIF Sundval in Sweden. I'm very excited to see this guy. I've never seen him in my life. His name's Ronaldo. Hopefully, he can be an absolute bagsman. And two free signings to finish things off. Nikola Kuzelovic from TSC over in Serbia comes in. He is consistent and worth £2 million already. So, already a very decent signing. And Lasse Stolenson, released from Lincoln over in England. A naturally fit, determined, work rate, horse, teamwork stamina demon in dm to run the engine room of the team a value of 2.1 to 4.8 million consistent likes big matches and has been very good over at lincoln for back-to-back -back seasons above a seven average rating can come in here to spain and hopefully dominate our midfield and it's a very different team to what we had last season but i think things are looking good eric puerto in goal Sorensen at right back capaldi norman wilson and andy lyons as the back four virales and kuchelovic keep the dm spots with valcarache gabriel silva and David Mailer making the three in behind Ronaldo Damas. I am very excited to see what this team can cook up. I wouldn't be surprised if Fortuna starts up front, but the hopeful in me wants Ronaldo to go and score 30 goals this season. That's what we're looking for. Obviously, we're finally in the Spanish first division, which is very exciting. We are have predicted 900 to 1 to get relegated. So after back-to-back -back promotions, it might be relegation. We shall see. Hopefully, we can stay up. Well, would you look at us? Zero goal difference, 10th place, bang on mid-table, and 50 points. I'd say that's a pretty successful first season, wouldn't you? That is... An absolute banger. We have taken our momentum of back-to-back -back promotions and kept ourselves in the Spanish La Liga in season number one. 40 wins, 8 draws, and 16 losses. There was a few big ones in there. 4-0 to Real Madrid, 4-2 to Barcelona, and even a 4-1 against Getafe. But also some big wins, some 3-0, some massive results against big sides. And overall, a very good, consistent season. Our best players this season were Gabriel Silva. As mentioned, I thought he would be our superstar cam this year. And Yassin Fortune kept that spot up front because um yeah I was very excited about Ronaldo. We're gonna have to do some serious scrolling to find him to find out he played zero games, got zero minutes, which of course means zero goals and zero assists. An absolute waste of a side in Ronaldo Damas, but it's quite cool. It's a Haitian striker, and I thought it would be fun to see if we can make him a player here. We did also compete in the Spanish Cup, but we were first rounded in this one, a 1-0 loss to Las Palmas. A very disappointing run in the Spanish Cup. A very good season in the Spanish Liga for the first time, which of course massively helped our financial situation. Up to £19 million in overall balance. In terms of debts and loans, completely clear, which is absolutely lovely. And now means we can seriously start using this money ball approach because it has been very difficult up until this point to sign players for any money whatsoever. As mentioned, we have raised about £2 million and spent about £9 million to get ourselves as a mid-table La Liga team from the third tier of Spain 
I think that's pretty good, you know. We've used the academy, we've used the other players, and we've now developed ourselves into a mid-table Spanish side, which I'm very, very happy with. We have got £13 million and £230,000 in wage budget to go and spend this year. And the reason we've got so much wage budget is because if we're looking at the stats for the detailed and checking out our average salary per annum, we are bottom by quite some distance. 11.28 million compared to Al Pacete of 15.5 and the top earners of Real Madrid on 230 million. So we've got some catching up to do. So let's get into season four signings. Well, this season was a case of clearing out some of the older players and bringing in some new superstars. So Pablo Valarache, as good as he has been, is off to Al Fateh for 800,000. Ivan Barbero to Mirandes for 165k. Hugo Rama to Al Shabab for 125. Adrian Loewu for 150 to Wistiao. And Bray Sainz for 89. K to Ibar and Danny Barcia to 300k to Huesca and that wasn't the only sales because there was also Ronaldo I was very excited about him. He's gone. £85,000 to Helsingborg. And Pablo Bray to RC Lens for 26000 A lot of Deadwood cleared out. It's now time for some new signings. And our first one is a backup centre-back on a free signing. It's Ennio Britti. He got no game time in the last one in the Parma Moneyball rebuild. Well, he smashed it over at Valerenga again in this one. So I've decided to bring him in as a backup centre-back. And there was two more free agents as well. Christian Matsimia signed from Circle Bruges with 18 jumping reach, 14 heading and very consistent. I'm excited to see what this guy can do. He's only 24 years of age and has been absolutely smashing it on loan at, uh, at Circle Bruce from Monaco. And he's even done well in the Monaco second team. A very good season in the top tier of Belgium and then released. So we'll take that. He looks fantastic. As does Benny Maquana. I think I've signed this guy in quite a few rebuilds up to this point, And he's never really taken that next step. He looks very good. Great consistency. He does hate big matches. Lucky enough, we don't have many of these here in the mid-table of the Spanish division, at least for the next couple of years. Anyway, he's got fantastic dribbling, determination and pace. And again, smashing it over in Ukraine at Policia, a 7.02, 7 goals, 7 assists. Has always been around that 7 average rating. So another one I'm very excited to bring in. Already a value of £11 million as well. And then we have three signings we made with actual money. Number one is Stradan Kuzmich from Viborg, a very decent backup fullback. Andre Bowman, our new starting right back, a Swiss Swedish from IF Alsborg, who is extremely consistent and a very well-rounded player. And the big one, the big striker to take over from Ronaldo, who was an absolute stinker, is Noah Jean Holm. Now, this one cost me a little bit of money, but I think you'll say it's worth it. He's consistent, he likes big matches, great jump and reach and heading, but also can play that advanced forward role very well with very good pace, strength, determination, finishing, and composure. He did cost us £4.5 million, but has done very well over at Rosenberg for multiple seasons and he now comes in to Deportivo, the Spanish league, where hopefully he can stake his claim. Now, another thing I need to mention is in Spain, there is release clauses on every single player. So someone like Noah Jean Holm can theoretically get picked up from any side for just £14 million. And that can happen to anyone in the team. They all have different release clauses. I try and put the £80 million or £150 million on most players, but some of them just simply flat out refuse unless you give them lots and lots of money. And I do not want to be doing that because we're doing money ball. So for the likes of Noah Jean Holm, we settled on 14 million pounds, which means he can be ripped away from us at any moment for just 14 million quid. Fantastic. If he smashed it this season, that's going to get done pretty quickly, I think. Uh, Mac Antonia is in goal. Bowman at right back. Capaldi and Williamson as our two centre backs. With Andy Lyons, our best player from Blackpool as our left back. Uh, Velares and Sorensen in DM. Boletia, Gabriel Silva and David Mela as our front three. Behind Noah Holm, who is our superstar striker. Backups wise, we are, you know, now knowing a lot of these names. Puerto, Kuzmich, Satmatsimia, Briti, Simao, Kuzvelovic, Vasquez, Mario, Sarasa, Makuna and Fortune. And the first player that we need to mention here is Mario, someone from the academy. He made his debut last season. He has five-star potential. He already has 11 finishing, 11 composure, very good speed, 16 flair, 16 ending, and 17 technique. You're 18 years of age. Throughout the course of this rebuild, we could see Mario become a Deportivo legend. We are again predicted 900 to 1, bottom of the league, to get absolutely smashed. So I suppose, again, it'll be 10th place. All right, Sport RSI, I didn't mean literally. We've finished 10th again. <laughs> uh, 38 games, 18 wins, 4 draws, and for 16 losses. But 58 points this time, 8 better off than last time, and a positive 2 goal difference. A banging season for us over here at Carinha. 
I didn't expect it to be so literal when I said 20th meant 10th. We do find that a lot in these rebuilds. We're quite good at predicting when we come. Um, apparently, the bottom team will come 10th. That's the uh, the rules here in Spain. Uh, but a very, very good season. And you'll notice a specific name up here, not Javi Gallan. At the top is Noah Jean Holm on 23 goals. He was absolutely fantastic. And we need to try and give him a contract ASAP because his stats are going up a lot. His value was capped because of his release clause and he is already a very good first division player. 24 goals and two assists in 35 games. Remember, we picked him up for £4.5 million. So regardless, lots of profit. He is now wanted by Al Halal in Saudi. Um, he's on 25k a week here in Deportivo. That probably double, no, not double, 20 times that value, I imagine, if he goes there. So it's going to be hard to keep hold of him. But we'll try, that's for sure. We'll give him a brand new contract and see if we can get him. Uh, Mikel, the goalkeeper, was very good on a 6.81. Andre Bowman, the brand new signing, a 6.98. Uh, in terms of other new signings, um, we've got Gabriel Silva, another fantastic season on a 7.15, 12 goals and 7 assists. David Mailer, I think, has reached his peak. I'm very happy with it because back-to-back -back seasons of being our left winger in Spain, but one goal, four assists, and a 6.7. I think now we're at a step too high for him. Kuzmic, when he plays, was brilliant with 11 assists from right back. And uh, Yassin Fortune, we didn't touch the pitch this year. A very big uh, sort of letdown. Mario, 16 starts and 13 off the bench. Now a three-star winger. And it's probably my pick over David Mailer at this point. He looks absolutely brilliant, progressing very well with all of his game time. And uh, hopefully he can become a Deportivo legend, as mentioned. In terms of finances, again, things are looking great. Now we're in the top tier of Spain. And this is going to keep climbing and climbing and climbing. And we've got absolutely no net debt as well. So this is brilliant. We've got £25 million in terms of our transfer budget. Wage budget, we're looking at around £200,000 again. And again, to show you guys how we've done in terms of the rest of the league. In terms of our salary per annum, we are down... In 19. We've overtaken Elche 16.8 million. We really are slumming it. Getafe doubled in a bit of ours, and they're where we finished this season in 10th. So we're doing absolutely brilliant, and I'm excited to see what we can carry on doing with this Deportivo side. Remember, if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. It helps the channel grow massively, and around 70% of you that watch these rebuilds are not subscribed. So hit that subscribe button and like the video, and it helps out more than you can imagine, and we can keep doing these fantastic rebuilds. Let's get on to Season 5. Just when you think you're getting somewhere, your two best players get poached. Number one, Noah Jean Hull has left to Al Halal and yes he's on £350,000 I couldn't recommend this guy enough if you were starting a brand new save look for Noah Jean Holm and Andy Lyons the Blackpool left back has also gone to Saudi at Al Ghaffara and has left us for £11.5 million pounds. now yes this is the point of Moneyball you sign these fantastic players for very cheap and they leave you but it just hurts because they're both gone and now I've got to rebuild two very important positions. We've also sold our starting left back Simao, our starting goalkeeper John Mikel Magantunia, loaned out Max Norman Williamson because he's not quite growing as expected and loaned out Manu Berakol. So lots of silence to get into. And number one is of course our brand new striker, Juros Serumchevovic from Severnia Sevestia over in Serbia. A fantastic signing for £2.7 million. Pounds. He scored 16 goals last season and he looks absolutely Absolutely brilliant, very well rounded, no standout stats of pace, composure, determination, just blue stats everywhere, and I'm a big fan. Next up is Richard who I'm not that big of a fan of, but he's cheap and he's a backup left back. Charis Singodius is our first free agent signing of this season. An extremely consistent CDM released from his club over in Greece, Pantanaikos, after back-to-back -back seven average ratings. I'm excited to bring him in and I'm excited for him to be a superstar for us. A very consistent DM at just 26 years of age. And Anders Hilm also fits that bill as well. Three million pounds, but a superstar left back, 24 years of age, consistent, loves big matches, very good crossing ability for a left back that is pivotal in the system we are playing here at Deportivo. He looks absolutely brilliant. Unlike Stefan Lekovic, who looks very, very average. Again, a free agent signing. We've tried to use the free agents as much as possible in this money will rebuild because we really do not get a lot of money here in Spain. So I thought free agents are going to be our friends. So Stefan has come in, released from Savernia Sevestia, has potential to get very good. Just right now, looks very average. But Magnus Smelius Shong does not look average. A 25-year-old Norwegian goalkeeper and the Norway number one joins us here at Deportivo. He's consistent. He's got great area reach, anticipation and jumping reach. He's six foot six and has been killing it over at Valeringa in Norway. A 7.14 this season. Recent seasons played every single game around a 
1.85 average. He looks very, very good, and I'm excited to see what he can do as our starting goalkeeper. Four more signings to get into then, and this one is Nikola Stankovic, signed from Kuraci over in Serbia as well. Serbia is a fantastic place to find very good um, money ball signings. They are all, always very, very good, and you sign them, and they're also quite good as well. He's consistent. He likes big matches. Very, very well-rounded. He cost us £2.5 million. Pounds. Last two seasons, 7.22, 7.23, with a great amount of assists as well. So Nicola comes in as a DM, which isn't his preferred position, but I think we can make him a good one. And if not, Sondre Gransas can become that guy. A 20-year-old Norwegian signing over from Mulder. He is extremely consistent and, again, does prefer the centre mid role, but has a hell of a lot of potential. Great determination and agility. So as that nippy little defensive midfielder to ping the balls over the top, a bit like a Kobe Mainu, I'm hoping we can make Sondre our superstar. And someone that's certainly going to be a superstar centre-back is Kreshmir Bobranjic, signed from Dynamo. He's got 16 determination, 16 natural fitness, Great heading, marking, and tackling, and should be brilliant. And our final signing, finally we are here, is Jan Hurtado, a 27-year-old Venezuelan striker who's been released from Boca Juniors, so he's used to playing in big stadiums. He's consistent, he likes big matches, he's a very strong target forward, and he comes in here after a very decent spell of 10 goals in 16 games at Boca. I'm excited to see what he can do first time over in Europe for him. Our tactic is looking brilliant, our squad is looking brilliant. Sojeng in goal, Bowman, Maximama, Vavre. Branić and Anders him as the back four. Grandsas and Stankovic in DM with Bolezia, Gabriel Silva, Makwana and Sobiljevic up front. Puerto, Kuzmic, Kupaidi, uh, Lekovic, Richard, Sorensen, Singaras, Mario, Albaleria, David Mailer, and Jan Hurtado make the backup 11. Again, we are constantly bringing players up from the under-18s, getting them in the first team and getting them playing minutes in the under-19s and the B team. This lot are all looking very, very good, and I'm excited to see if they can take the next step. We're again probably predicted down in 20th. Let's have a quick check. Ah, oh, 19th. That surely means ninth place for the Teportivo boys. Let's get into season six. My mistake is season five. And ladies and gentlemen, we've already got Champions League football. What an absolute rise this has been. We have finished fourth place, obviously absolutely miles away from Real Madrid, who are 26 points away from us. But Deportivo, a 25 goal difference, 23 wins, four draws and 11 losses. And we seem to be finding these fantastic strikers to help us get there because while Endrick is dominating the goals on 31, Juros Semenovic is in second place and he is absolutely banging him in. 24 goals in 38 games. Luckily for us currently, he's not wanted. And he has got a release clause of 22 million pounds so again 10x in our money if he does go if not we've got an absolute superstar on our hands we had a brilliant season i want to check out the team overview we are third in goals we are scoring lots, 85 goals, level with Atletico Madrid and Barcelona. Possession-wise, we never really are here. Conceded-wise, I'm not expecting us to be here. We're massively overachieving. But points per game in fourth place, Champions League football for Deportivo next season. Sadly, in the Spanish Cup, again, we're not doing brilliant. We got knocked out in the fourth round, this time an extra time against Real Betis, which is a little bit gutting, but it is what it is. Overall, I'm very, very happy with how things are going. We are progressing as a club at a very very fast rate already in the champions league and as mentioned back in 2004 this is uh, when they got into the semi-finals 24 years later deportivo are back we have done a meteoric rise but there's a long way to go the champions league winners medal needs to be round our neck before we finish this rebuild get your comments in down below how many seasons do you reckon it's going to take us five seasons to get into the champions league will it now take us another five another ten three four to win it let me know down below season what is going to be the winning season let's get into season six though finally uh, 16 million pounds in transfer budget lots of money in wage budget i'm going to try and speed things up in terms of going through the transfers and bits now because a lot of it from here on out is going to be very good regions that are coming through and i know a lot of people don't get that interested in the regions so i'll click for them at a very quick rate and we're going to do more in-depth stuff in terms of the fixtures we have another big sale this summer of christian maximia leaving off to saudi as they always do to go and join our 
Al Tai for £9 million. And some more outgoings as well, amounting to £7 million. Nikola Stankovic to Raul Betis for 4.5. Lassie Sorosan to Al Shabab for 2.3. Javier Sarasa, who looked brilliant at the start, has left to Cordoba for just £325,000. And our striker from the very start, Yassine Fortuna, leaves to Grasshoppers for £300,000. So again, some decent money to go and spend. Around £16 million has been raised. The free agents are still going to be the main thing we are using. And Arsenal Batov has been released from Zoria over in Ukraine to come in and be our starting centre back. And another goalkeeper has come in as well to be the backup as Alan Marinovic signed from Sandford in Norway. This guy again looks brilliant and is simply here to back up the superstar. Franco Rosado comes in as another completely rubbish left back. I seem to be getting the left back position wrong a lot. Last year, Richard. This year, Rosano. He's a backup. It's fine. Valiant Bodis is our first regen signing from TSC in Serbia. He is a fantastic young CDM. I'm excited to see what he can grow into. Already a Serbian international. In fact, he was our only regen signing this season. Juan Jimenez also comes in. This guy is an unbelievably quick centre-back from Rosario Central with 16 acceleration. 18 determination and simply fantastic. We signed him for just 6.5 million pounds. He's been brilliant for a couple of seasons now and I'm excited to see what Juan Jimenez can do. He also loves big matches and he's made his Argentinian debut. And to finish things off with another free agent signing, it is Dango Watara who has been released from Bournemouth. He is absolutely smashing it in real life and was brilliant yesterday against Manchester United as I record this that is. Um, and yeah, he's been released from there. He's got a value of 29 million pounds. He's on 45,000 pounds a week. He's extremely consistent. He likes big matches. And I think this is an absolute coup on a free agent signing. Already a good uh, first division player. And I think he is already Champions League quality. He makes the team look so good. With Otara and Makuna as our wingmas. Gabriel Silva in cam, Semenovic up front, Valiant Bodis and Gransas in DM with Anders Hilm, Vibranić, Jimenez, Bowman and Sojeng making up the back line. Omerovic, Kuzmic, Batov, Lekovic and Rosano as the backup defenders. Andres Singaras as the backup DMs. Mario Alberaria, David Mailer and Rojas as our backup striking options. Mario again last season had a decent season. 36 games last year, 9 goals and 5 assists and is progressing very, very well. His stats are looking great. Value-wise, not a lot. But to be honest, with this money ball, I find it difficult to sell Wonder Kid Regens. Or not Wonder Kid Regens, sorry. Regens from the Academy. I've got a bit of a thing, especially here at Devil Tivo. I want to make them great. So we're going to be doing a little bit of a, a, a youth to glory as well as a money ball here at Deportivo. And if Mario and a few others can hopefully progress into being starters here at Deportivo, that's the dream. That's what we're looking for. Season six, obviously, is going to be difficult. We've got a lot more games this season being in the Champions League. We are predicted just down in 14th place. Some big improvements. And based on how things have been, that'll be fourth again. But I doubt that's going to happen because Champions League football... Another, what, 10 games minimum in the league phase is going to be very, very difficult to see if we can do anything. Um, I'm just hoping we can make it. So let's get in to Season 6's results. Well, it turns out the Champions League is where Deportivo comes to life. So maybe... We're going to end this money ball rebuild a little bit quicker than before. I'm going to show you this game against Ajax here because I simply cannot believe the result. This is in the league phase. We go 1-0 up nice and early and Brian Brobby makes it 1-0 in 17th minutes. Don't worry, this is about to become mental. Gabriel Silva whips a ball in, it bounces around. Mario, the Deportivo superstar, pumps it home to make it 2-1. Boris and Jimenez link up for Gabriel Silva finds Sereninovic to find Bowman, who finds Mario again, and he bags a brace. In the first half, it's 3-1. And we fancy another one in the first half as well. Gabriel Silva and Hilm linking up. Gabriel Silva finds Watara Dango and he makes it 4-1 in the first half. 70 minutes on the clock. There is a lot more goals yet to come. Hyansen and Mansvark link up before Windau makes it 4-2. How does 5-2 sound? Kuzmich finds Gabriel Silva. Back to Kuzmich. Back to Gabriel Silva. Drives inside. A fantastic finish past Ramage to make it. Was that 5-2 I believe? Should we make it 6-2? A great ball at the top. And so many Egypt is finally going to get his first goal of the uh, of the game. This is. Uh, that's 6-2. Sosa whips it in the back stick. A header from Vanderberg makes it 6-3. And we had the last laugh making it 
free. Hilm on the left-hand side, cuts the ball back inside, and Gransas is there. A simply ridiculous game. Well, like I said, I feel like Deportivo come to life in the Champions League. And we did have some very difficult games. We come 20th, so we do qualify for the knockout playoff round, which is very good. Three victories, obviously that's 7-3 over Ajax, 4-0 against Jurg Gardens, and 2-0 against Rapid. We drew to Leipzig, to Salzburg, and to Inter Milan, and we lost to Liverpool and Barcelona. I think that's pretty respectable. And in the knockout playoff round, we brought in to Milan back to our stadium for the first time in the knockout playoff rounds and Semenovic got us 1-0 up in 48 minutes. Inter Milan do respond after a bit of an error at the back. Dejan Kamiri drives on the right hand side. He cuts it back in and Barella's there to make it 1-0. And in the second leg, we really did fight. Gabriel Silva whips it in. It drops to Benny Makuda. And he fires an absolute screamer in to give us the lead. Into Milan are going to retaliate. So Minovic flies in. The ball pops through to Smith Rowe, who finds Arturo Martinez. And he makes it 1 all on the night. Still level in the game. Mario finds Rojas, who finds Kuzmic. Guess who he's going to find? That man, Mario, yet again, scoring for his hometown club. We are ahead. 92nd minute. DeMarco whips it in and a header. It's level. And of course, extra time. The little club from Spain, Deportivo, are going to fall just short. Camiri and Lautaro Martinez link up. I think that's miles offside. Sadly, it wasn't. And Inter Milan win 3 2, 4 3 in aggregate. And we gave it a very good shot in our first time in Europe. And while it did, of course, affect our league position, we still finished in seventh place and still get Europe next season. And a competition, we've got a very good chance of going on to lift. You know, I love the green one, the European Conference League. I think we can win this. We were one point away from Vigo, four away from Villarreal, and a whole host away from the Champions League in the end. Quite a big drop off with them extra games being placed. But as mentioned i expected it we are in the conference league next season there is no panic we can still win a european trophy and it'll be quite fun if we can win the conference league the europa league and the champions league that'd be even better we can win every single trophy in this rebuild but it's a decent season that's for sure in terms of the squad the players which stood out to us we had a very good right back in andre bowman again 13 assists and five goals 7.36 for gabriel silva now we are going to touch him 16 goals 14 assists this guy cost us 3.2 million he has got double figure goals in every single season and this is the first time he's got double figure assists as well 7.16 7.17 7.23 and a 7.35 his stats aren't all that but what i always mention in these moneyball rebuilds is sometimes when players are on a goal scoring run or on good form just pick them play them and they can become superstars he's even got himself the vice captain's armband so gabriel silva a shout out to you 29 and 11 for euro Semenovic, who is now wanted and is unhappy and wants to leave by a whole bunch of clubs southampton leon lens freiburg stuttgart and al Riyad. we might have to move on from him mario another 10 goals this season we saw some big ones in the champions league as well big respect to him and dango watara our free agent signing 11 goals an absolute superstar star of a signing finances wise again 25 million pounds in transfer budget around hundred thousand pounds in wage budget lots of money in the bank and we are still looking to improve these bits as well you can see we've improved the youth recruitment up to a two and a half star youth facilities and training facilities still three star but the reputation is up to four so we're doing bits it's time to get in to the next season's signings. Well, the superstar striker has gone, and we knew this day was coming. Juros Semenovic leaves to SC Freiburg. They triggered his release clause of £26 million, and it is certainly a big loss. As is Sondre Gransas, who left us of the January of last year for £19 million. The Norwegian wonder kid is absolutely brilliant, and I certainly recommend you guys pick him up on your saves. He has developed into a very, very good player, and a, a consistent, loves big matches. I couldn't recommend him enough. They were the two only sales though and obviously it gave us around 40 million pounds to go and spend and a lot of it is going to be on some fantastic wonder kids and regens marcos is the first 19 years of age has been smashing it over brazil with a 6.99 at spt in his first full season i'm excited to see what marcos can do for such a bargain francisco andrada is the next one an argentinian from village again a bargain of 4.9 million pounds a 7.23 with 11 goals for Velez. he comes in as a great striker option and adrian 
Zenjelo from Karachi in Serbia. Great determination, great agility and balance. And it looks like I've finally found a good backup left back. Leos Ahabadia is a 19-year-old Mexican signed from Monterey with fantastic determination, flair, agility and pace. £8 million, back-to-back -back seasons, above a 7 average rating. He looks brilliant. And I am going to apologise for signing so many, uh, was it, regen players. But genuinely, with the money ball... Finding younger players is what I like doing. And uh, I've sort of mentioned this in a few reboots now. So I think younger money with players just makes more sense because they sell for better in the future. And it just makes an even better sense to the money ball thing rather than signing a 28 year old. If there's a 19 year old performing at the same level, why not go and pick him up? Saying that, Gabriel Segura is 24 years of age and signed from Basel. This guy looks absolutely brilliant and very similar to Grand Saz. He's extremely consistent and a very good little young central defensive midfielder. Signed for £5.75 million, has dropped a 7.06 last season. He's been great for multiple seasons over at Basel and I'm excited to see what he can do for us as well. The team does look a little bit different now there's so many regions in. So Sun Zheng in goal, Bowman, Jimenez, Vrbanic and Hilm as the back four. Segura and Todis as our two DMs with Mario getting the starting position at right wing. Gabriel Silva, Aquamaria and Andrada as our striker. Again, I'm not going to go through every single time the team now because it is pretty much full of regions. I don't want to bore you too much. We're going to get in to how we're actually performing this season conference league is the goal spanish cup i'd like to finally get past the fourth round and in the spanish first division we are predicted mid table from the board and from the season preview so let's get back into the champions league and maybe even lift a trophy along the way well as expected we done very well in the conference league league phase just six games in this one but four victories against legia lomon owd and csk sofia a draw to botev plodiv and a loss to brighton 5-2 which is fair enough means we were straight into the round of 16 but over two legs we beat FC 20 4-2 and in the second game a brace from Mario as well the Deportivo Wonder Kid is proven to be an absolute demon quarterfinals we got our own back on Botev Plodiv after drawing to them in the league phase we beat them 5-1 now get here in the second game a brace from Dango Ratara we're into the semi-finals of a European competition and of course we pulled Brighton out of the hat didn't we but guess what we're the team in blue and white here Jimenez finds Segura the CDM who drives through and makes it 1-0 in 16 minutes. Then took to the 65th for anything else to happen. Segura again on the ball. Finds a great ball back to Jimenez. And he finds the top corner. And we're going to grab a third as well. Hill whips it in. Is headed clear. It drops to Salguero. Who I believe is a regen come through the academy. And he makes it 3-0 in the first tie. In the first leg against Brighton. But away from home at the Amex, we were no longer the team in blue and white. And it seems the team in blue and white always does very well. Buenonote finds a great ball into the box and Almada puts it in. Newerton finds Almada who finds Buenonote again. A great ball through to Douglas Luiz who volleys it in to make it 2-0. And just after half time, Buenonote finds Estupinian. He finds Newerton. He finds a ball into Almada and João Pedro pokes it home. Extra time was on the way. But luckily, it's time for the yellow team to step up. A ball to Albera and David Mailer, the player from the third tier of Spain, we have carried with us to being in a European competition, puts his hometown club Deportivo La Coruña in the final of the Conference League. A 3-1 victory, a 3-1 loss in the night, a 4-3 victory on aggregate, and David Mailer gets the winning goal. Could we take it all the way and lift a European competition? Well, in 15 minutes, we got ourselves off to a good start. A little bit lucky, a deflection from Lingbo, and that turns us 1-0 up. Perea then whips the ball up and uh, Stad de Reims are quite good. Mofile makes it 1-1. Perea then finds Mazzano. Back to Mazzano from Perea. He whips it in and Mo Dorami's there. An absolute superstar wonder kid. We're 2-1 down. Dangara finds a ball to Albaneria out in the cam spot. Out wide finds a ball back inside to Jimenez. Another deflection. It's 2 all. And I tell you what, we'll grab a third. And it's not even going to be a deflection. But Seria finds a ball into the box. It drops to Dango and he makes it 3-2. And Deportivo are European champions. Well, 
of the Conference League. But if you listen to West Ham fans, they're champions of Europe. So we'll take it. Deportivo 3-2 victors. And we are certainly going to be in the Europa League at minimum next season. And well, in fact, that's exactly where we're going to be. Because we've come fifth in the Spanish League. We're back in European competition again. Three seasons in a row now, which is absolutely brilliant. Again, quite some bit off getting into that top four. But I genuinely think with the amount of games we are now playing compared to that season we did get in fourth, or you don't play this many games, we are doing very, very well at building our squad up. 62 points, 11 goal difference, 14 losses, 19 wins, and 5 draws. And again, we've got some superstars in here. Mario, 16 goals and 4 assists, was almost our top goal scorer with Dango Watara, who I predicted at the start of the season to be a backup. 45 starts, 17 goals and 8 assists. Francisco Andrada, the 21-year-old, 10 goals in 15 starts. Incredibly impressive. And Gabriel Silva, well, he dropped off. I don't know why, but a 6.9, 3 goals and 6 assists. Maybe we've drawn all we can out of the Brazilian camp, which is fair enough. He's been a fantastic servant for us. I am absolutely buzzing. We have lifted a European trophy next year, the Europa League. The year after that, the Champions League. It sounds like it's going to work out brilliantly. Finances-wise, £25 million in transfer budget yet again. Lots of wage budget to spend. And again, to touch on how we're doing in terms of our wage budget against the other teams, we're up against 14th place, £31 million. We've just come in fifth. Villarreal, again, £71 million, double our money. We are competing with the big boys on a very little budget, the exact money ball. Well, let's get into the signs for season eight, I believe we're on now. Well, this is officially our longest Moneyball rebuild yet. We have gone to Season 8 before, but we can't complete it in Season 8 this time. It's Season 9 and onwards. We have made a few sales. Arsene Ibasov has left to Altai for £14 million. Benny Makuna leaves to Al Khalij for £7 million after being a great servant for the club. And talking of great servants, Gabriel Silva has also gone back to Brazil. After 160 games here at Deportivo, he leaves after a fantastic spell of seasons. We make £500,000 and he's helped us grow as a club massively. Respect to Gabriel Silva. There was a few other outgoings and loans as well, and we ended up raising £24.5 million, a very successful season of sales. And it enabled us to bring in superstar Jao Veloso from Benfica to come in and be our new central attacker midfielder, our new Gabriel Silva. Extremely consistent, loves big matches, and is just the exact same player, just a couple of stats better in every single position. So just a bit of an upgrade for seven and a half million pounds, an absolute bargain. Again, has been doing great. Last season at Benfica, his breakout year, a 7.08. I think he's going to be brilliant. German Franco is the next one I'm very excited with. He can play along the back line as a whole, but mainly a superstar left back. Very consistent, love big matches from River Plate, five million pounds. What a bargain. And we'll stay in Argentina and we'll stay in the bargains. Eduardo Sosa, £7 million from Huracan. Nine goals in 19 games. Extremely consistent. Great bravery, finishing, composure and pace. Also extremely consistent. Antonio Fernandão, a Brazilian centre-back signed from ATG for £5.5 million. He's extremely brave, determined and a very good centre-back. And back to real-life players, Wilfred George comes in. £2.5 million, a Nigerian central defensive midfielder signed from Christiansund. This guy is very young in real life. I believe he's a, what would he be? He'll be a 17, 18. He's progressed into a very good, well-rounded CDM. Extremely consistent, likes big matches. Isn't quite good enough, but genuinely comes in as a decent enough backup. But a DM that comes in and certainly starts is Matvey Kislyak, a 24-year-old Russian who was signed from CSK Moscow. Great passing, vision, pace, determination, defensive stats as well. Extreme consistency, loves big matches. And of course, again, banging it over in Russia with a stat over a seven average rating. He has been brilliant. And overall, makes the team, again, look very, very good. Son Jeng in goal. Bowman, Jimenez, Fabranić, Franco, Segua, Bodis, Mario, Javaloso, Akimada, and Andrada up front. The team is strong, but can we win the Europa League? Well, we certainly felt the step up with the Europa League. We finished in 12th place. Four wins against Savinia, Sevestia, Olympiacos, Maccabi, Tel Aviv, and PAOK. Two draws against Liverpool and Fenerbahce, and two losses against Frankfurt and Braga we were in the knockout playoff round. But luckily, we faced Bodo Glimt. 9-1. Um, 
this one and a hat trick from David Mailer on the European stage. He really is an absolute superstar and Mario got a brace in the first game as well. So the Youth Academy is doing bits. The round of 16, however, saw us come up against Newcastle and they were 1-0 in the first leg and away from home at St. James's Park. We lost 2-1 and Mario scored but it wasn't quite enough. And Newcastle went on to win the whole thing, beating Villarreal 3-2 in extra time. They also won the league phase, so we did have the hardest possible draw. So I think a very decent showing of ourselves. That can't be said again in the Spanish Cup because we've lost 1-0 to Burgos. We simply are absolutely useless in the domestic trophy. But we're not useless in the Spanish First Division. We get top four and are massively clear of anyone else as well. 79 points. Speaking of being clear, Real Madrid and Barcelona, they're around 20 points ahead of us and of Lego Madrid. Again, they're so good. I don't know if we'll ever win the Spanish First Division. I think we could win the Champions League because at the end of the day, the Champions League is a few games. This is 38 games. And when Real Madrid are winning 31 out of the 38, we've just won 24, which I think is extremely impressive and we're nowhere near. So it's going to be very, very difficult. Samu Omarida run is dominating the goal scoring charts. Endrick in second, Lamina Yamal in third and Rodrigo in fourth. We haven't got anyone there and that's because scoring goals isn't something we're very good at. Jao Veloso scored 17, Watara scored 17, Mario scored 14, but that's it in terms of our double figures. And our strikers simply aren't putting the ball in the back of the net enough. Neos Akamada scored 9 and 9, Andrada 7 and 4. Juan Gimenez from centre back slash CDM scored 7 goals, more than our actual striker. David Moyler got 6 and 2. We're just struggling at scoring goals, and it's something we certainly need to fix for next season, especially being in Champions League football. Could we do it in season nine? It'll be very, very difficult. We've got 25 million pounds yet again to go and spend. 35k in wage budget, so we really are at the max. There's a few players that are wanting the team. Andrada, for example. Juan Jimenez is wanted by Alitiad. David Miner is wanted by Genoa. Um, there's a few players that are wanted for a big bit of money, but I don't know if we're going to get rid of them. We'll have to see. We want to try and keep hold of these players now because we're making that push for Champions League winners. Let's see what we can do. Season 9. More big sales. Francesco and Andrada leaves for £12 million to Mallorca and enables us to bring in a superstar striker. Lucas is the man I hope can take Deportivo to Champions League winners. He's 22 years of age, has great, great first touch and heading, great pace, great determination, composure and finishing. Likes big matches and I'm confident he can be the difference maker. Vigo Carlson joins from Malmo for £2.5 million as a backup winger. Noel Salinius joins from IFK Nordkoping as a good backup DM. A lot better than Wilfred George, who to be honest has left the club. He is consistent, great determination and I like the look of them a lot. Jovan Mildanjevic comes in as a backup goalkeeper because the other one they brought in, the one the kid, uh, he left because he was angry because he wasn't playing enough. This guy was a very good backup last season at Southampton and comes in to be our backup as well. And finally, a free agent signing of Dominic Perepic from Hadjuk Split. He's got great decision making, heading, marking and tackling. Extremely consistent, loves big matches and has been released from a Hadjuk, which I'm... Pretty excited about it, to be honest, because he looks absolutely brilliant. He comes straight in to our team, straight into the back line. Shojeng in goal. Marcos Jimenez, Perpich, Franco as the back four. Kislyak, Bodis, Watara, Veloso, Akmudia, and Lucas make up the rest of the team. Mildanovic, Bowman, Fernando, Vibraniec, Zenjo, uh, Singo, Cernelius, Mario, Alvarelia, Carlson, and Sosa make up the rest. I think this team is good enough to possibly challenge for the league. Which, by saying that, I mean challenge for the Champions League as well. We are 50 to 1, but if you look at that, that's joint with 6th place, which is just outside the Champions League. And as we know, we could always overachieve. So we're looking to break into that top three. Well, not quite, but we are only three points off Real Madrid, eight points off the lead of the title. A very, very good season in fourth place. And we have found a striker that can score lots of goals. Lucas gets the golden boot. 34 goals in 51 games and was absolutely brilliant this season. He looks like a superstar that can grow in something special. And I think we're on to something. We may not have completed the league this season, but have we done the Champions League or maybe even the Spanish Cup? Uh, no, quarterfinal by Barcelona in the Spanish Cup. We got absolutely battered. And uh, I don't think we're ever going to win this thing. 
it's basically impossible. It's harder than winning the Champions League. I'm 99% sure. We snuck through the league phase in the Champions League. That's for sure. Three wins, one draw and four losses. But three victories against fairly easy clubs. So we got battered by Liverpool, Madrid, uh, Leon, and Rennes. But to be honest, all games within a goal or two. And a draw against Newcastle. We are in 22nd place, which means we do go in to the knockout playoff round. And we get drawn up against a very good Arsenal side, whose, you know, wonder kids have grown into big superstars. We do go in the up thanks to a screamer from Kislyak in 52 minutes. And in the 94th minute, we're going to make it 2-0 at home as well. So we give ourselves the best chance. Carlson finds the ball into Sosa, who pokes it home. But in the second leg, it's going to be much more difficult. Well, we do concede... But that's the only goal we conceded. And we are 2-1 victors. And we are going into the run of 16. We've knocked out Arsenal. But we lost 1-0 at home to RB Leipzig. And 1-0 away from home as well. So we are knocked out in the round of 16. It feels a little bit tough. Round of 16 against Leipzig. We've just knocked out Arsenal. Who are always so good on FM. And just two games losing by a goal it's a little bit gutting, but it means this season is not our season. Finances-wise, lots of money again. 32 million, 65 in the bank balance-wise. We're doing bits. Club info-wise, youth recruitment's up to three and a half. Training facilities up to three and a half. We are improving the overall club. Mario is now the captain of the club as well. Captain, leader, legend through the academy. 180 games and 40 goals. What an absolute hero. Season 10. I've never thought we'd get here on season 10 in Spain. But to be honest, we have grown a club from the third tier of Spain to being potentially Champions League winners. Can we do it in season 10? A few sales to go through. Antonio Fernando goes to Nice and Sornelius goes to Mallorca for 2.6. But that was the only major outgoings. Incomings wise, we spent 7.5 million on Costa Rican CDM Jason Jimenez from New York Rebels. 4.1 on Argentinian left back Horatio Portillo from Telerias, who again has been absolutely brilliant. Great stamina, bravery, crossing is also brilliant. Alexander Jelsa comes in, a 26 year old experienced centre back coming in from Molda after being released over there. Reno comes in for five million pounds a very good right back with great bravery anticipation jumper reach and stamina great tackling marking and headland as well just five million pounds and that's the reason i can't stop signing these regens because they are so cheap and so good arvin agger joins us for one million pounds from sweden he was released from laxongia boys and it looks absolutely you know average i was about to say brilliant but I'd be lying to your face. He's an average right back. Tyreek George joins on a free transfer after being released from Burnley. He's a wonder kid from Chelsea who's progressed into a very reasonable right wing as a central attack midfielder. Consistent, likes big matches and looks very good. Martin Correa comes in in our left wing position. Very determined, great dribbling, great speed. I believe he was about 6.75 million pounds, a 7.33 last season, 7.07 season before that and a 7.26 before that. So this guy is fantastic he looks absolutely brilliant as well and that's it for signings and the team is looking like so Sojeng in goal Marcos Jimenez Perpic and Franco Kislyak Bodis Watara Veloso Akmudia and Lucas up front the backups are strong the you know the regens are strong I get that there's a lot of regens in this team but it's hard not to because they are so good so cheap and I think this season could be the season we've built a super team season preview seventh still 50 to one so basically joint sick for real uh, san sebastian i think we can do it this season i think we can lift it all so for the first time in the rebuild we've made the semi-finals of the spanish cup lamina yamal cuts it back to liveramento and he scores to make it one nil to barcelona and yes we're against barcelona lucas makes it one all and just two minutes later a ball in from akmudia to find kisliak makes it two one how does 3-1 sound? Breno finds Kistiak. He finds Mario. A great ball to Lucas. He's brought down. Falls to Akmudia. He makes it 3-1. Barcelona are going to get a goal back in the 80th minute. Lemina Yamal drives on the right-hand side. He cuts a ball back into the box. And Vitor Roque is there to make it 3-2. But it's not enough. We are going to the Spanish Cup final. Honestly, this competition, harder than the Champions League. And that's because not only do I face Barcelona in the round of the semi-finals, we also face Real Madrid in the final. Tariq George gets us 1-0 up in 46 minutes. Lucas holds up. He finds Portillo, Horatio to find Akmudia, who finds a great finish into the back stick to make it 2-0 just after half time. Horatio finds Veloso to find Molina to find Aga, who drives down the line. He finds a great ball in and Correa is there to make it 3-0. 
Real Madrid are going to get a goal back from Jorge to make it 3-1. But we have won the Spanish Cup. I didn't think it was going to be possible. It's a ridiculously tough competition to win because Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona. But we have done it. And when I really didn't think this was going to be possible, we have won the Spanish First Division. 31 wins, 3 draws and 4 losses. A 68 goal difference. 96 points. I don't know how, but we have toppled Real Madrid by two points. Barcelona by 89 points they're on. Seven points clear of them. Imagine getting 89 points and coming third. Or Coruña, Deportivo de Coruña. We have done it. We've actually done it. In terms of team overview, we were second on goals of 103. We were second on us and conceded with 35. Nowhere on possession, but most on points per game. And in terms of the team details, just to have a look at this salary per annum. And the teams we are competing against, we are eighth. £48 million. Pounds. Real Madrid have a six times our salary per annum. And we have pipped them to the title. The only thing left, the Champions League. Top eight in the league phase. Eight games, six wins against Newcastle, Ludogrets, Celtic, Benfica, POK and Lazio. Two losses against Barcelona and Leipzig by a goal each. Let's hope Leipzig aren't going to be the four on our side yet again. Round of 16, Captain Mario stepped up in leg one to grab a base away against Napoli. And we also won 3-0 at home. A brace from Veloso, a goal from Sosa, 5-0 on aggregate against Napoli. We are quite good and we're into the quarterfinals. And we stayed in Italy for this one. And what a game it was. 2 all against AC Milan. Mario scoring. Rafa Leal scoring. Sosa scoring. And in the 93rd minute, Rafa Leal keeps the game level. We have to take it back home to see if we can go through to the semis of the Champions League. And if we do, this will match their greatest ever Champions League achievement of getting the semi-finals in 2004. Well, Giao Veloso makes us 1-0 up in 27 minutes. And just five minutes later, Kislyak finds Franco, who finds Akmudia. He finds a great ball in the box to Sosa to make it 2-0 and we dispatched of AC Milan in the quarterfinals matching Deportivo's best ever finish of the semi-finals let's get there it's against Juventus staying in Italy well it was a very boring 0-0 for the first leg but the same can't be said for the second leg and we are going to go 1-0 down and Asan Wadrego spinning volley into the top corner in 10 minutes puts Juventus 1-0 up well just two minutes later we're going to respond Jimenez has scored a handful of screamers this season and he scores another one there throughout this rebuild he has been brilliant Sosa finds a ball to Akmudia he puts it into George a free agent sign I remember released from Burnley why well, does a Champions League semi-final goal sound that's 2-1. Correa finds Jimenez to make it 3-1. The signing from New York Red Bulls. And 4-1 is coming. Franco finds George. He finds Chalveloso. He finds Correa. 4-1. Juventus have been dispatched of. Deportivo La Coruña are in the final of the Champions League. And well, in just nine minutes, we are going to get our game off to a brilliant start. A horrendous error from Diego Costa makes us 1-0 leaders. Jimenez and Juanez are linking up to find Breno down the right-hand side. A classic drilled cross into Sosa makes it 2-0 in 11 minutes. How does a third sound? Breno whips it in. A deflection. I just, uh, just, just, just what on earth has happened there? Full manager. You've blessed us. That's three. And we want a fourth as well. Mario, George, Kislyak with another screamer. Makes it 4-0 in the Champions League final. And yes, Bayern Munich, you can have your last goal. Xavi Simmons finds Marcos, who left us in January of this season, to find Musiala. And can you believe it? 4-1 winners. We are champions of Europe and not the West Ham version. We're in the Conference League. The full version. Deportivo. Ten seasons is what it took us. It's the longest one yet. I hope you guys have enjoyed. It's been an absolute journey, but we have made the Spanish third tier club champions of the Champions League and our top goal scorer in the final season, Mario. Mario, Mario, Mario. 212 games, 59 goals. Amazing player. He is, you know, a fairly average player in terms of his stats, but he just performs. 26 goals, 7 assists, consistent 
loves big matches, an absolute superstar. What a player he has been for us. Xiao Veloso, 21 and 17. Lucas, 19 and 4. Sosa, 14 and 2. 14 and 12 for Tariq George as well. 13 and 7 for Agmudia. 10 and 12 from Korea. Uh, 12 assists and 7 goals from Kisviak. And 5 and 10 from Franco. The difference this season was the whole team chipped in. And that is while our best right back we've ever seen, Marcos, left of 40 million to buy Bayern Munich in uh, in January, which is gutting. Let's just add up 50 million there, 54 million, uh, 90 million, 120 million, 160 million, 170 million. Uh, oh my God, we're getting into big maths. 195, uh, 200 million, 200 million pounds in outgoings. That's 5, 15, 27, 47, 60, 100, 120, 140, 100. And 50 million pounds, a positive 50 net to get a club from the third tier of Spain to the top tier of Spain. That is incredibly, incredibly impressive. And the club info screen, a five star reputation. Deportivo for you guys on Patreon to pick up from. A massive thank you if you've made it to this side of the video. You might as well like it. You might as well subscribe. And if you know what, you might as well watch that video down there as well because it's another money ball, and I'm sure you'll love it. Thank you for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.